Huh. The mana goes into the pool, but then it just disappears. What could be happening? Oh. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Regrowth. Oh. Oh, that's ominous. That was... That was a warp effect. Thankfully, I don't think anything actually happened. Anyway, forgive me if I seem a little bit moody, but this is my third time attempting this intro. Yes, it seems that OBS has decided to just ignore the begin recording hotkey I set up for it, so I have to treat it like a mentally deficient child and click on it to start each time to make sure. Anyway, in the uh, first take of the intro, I started us off by crafting this extreme infusion stone. This is just all the essence that we've been gathering with a bunch of more essence we've been gathering, and it allows us to make even more types of essence to gather. Imagine that. Is it nighttime yet? Yes. The reason that I made that extreme infusion stone was in order to get a new type of sapling that we need to advance farther in Thaumcraft. It is this very pretty, very lovely blue silverwood sapling. Yeah, so as you can see, its recipe is very similar to the Great Wood Sapling, except for requiring a Great Wood Sapling, and requiring the next tier of Essence. Now, keep in mind, each one of those extreme essences that you saw, that is four entire stacks of Essence Dust compressed into this. And it is going to have quite a few uses. It's going to give us Osmium, it's going to give us Cobalt, Ardite, Certus Quartz, Sulfur, meh, Slime, meh, Ghast, meh, Withers, yes, uh, the Potion Seeds. So yeah, and each one of those seeds is going to require like three or four extreme essences. So that is, uh, oh my, we need golems. I am not going to be digging that up by hand. That is peasant work. So, as you saw, we have an interesting little thing happening to our manna. It is coming down to this railway station you see here. And that is happening because of the sparks you see hovering over the pool. I'm not sure if I need my stick to see this. This spark has that red symbol floating around it, which means that it is a submissive spark. You make uh, spark augments. You make spark augments with a little bit of alfind ender pearls, a little bit of mana steel, and a rune and they affect how sparks behave in various ways. In this case, this spark is submissive, so if there is a spark that is dominant or just a regular spark within its range, it will donate mana from its pool to it. So all the mana from this pool is draining downstairs until that pool is full when it will finally fill itself. Over on our Thawncraft area, we have the output of that pool. And this pool has a dominant spark. If you look closely, you see the symbol is different. And downstairs, the pool with a spark is just a regular pool. And I believe it's just right here. Yes. Now, the mana is being transmitted between these pools by this lovely little minecart system. These mana pumps are something I've never played with before, which is a surprise because they're actually rather cheap. They're just made of like living rock and mana steel in a bucket. 
And this mana pool minecart is just a vanilla style minecart with a mana pool in it. However, what was expensive was all these tracks, especially in this pack, because tracks actually require these rails that have to be made in a rolling machine, and they require these rail beds, which are made out of uh, wood that has been processed with creosote. So we found another use for creosote, which is always lovely. Anyway, when I send this cart back home, and I have it on just manual controls for sending and receiving. It can be automated because if you put a comparator on the mana pump, it will read the mana level in the uh, in the minecart. So I could just have it um, depart when it's empty there and depart when it's full here. But eh, I'm not going to be sending it that often because mana is going to last for freaking ever up there. But yes. You saw that very, very quickly, it sucked up all the mana in this pool here. And if I send it back, it'll drain into that pool up there. So that, oh, I should, I should turn that off. That is all very neat. The final thing that I talked about in the first take that I am no longer able to do is that you've probably noticed by now that my armor is very shiny. It has protection four. It has for a couple episodes now, but I didn't have the complete set uh, enchanted, and I wanted to show you how it was done. But sadly, that did not happen. Anyway, I have a little bibliocraft area over here. These typesetting tables are easy. These uh, plate chases are just like wood and iron. The printing press is somewhat expensive, but it's just a crap ton of iron, and it requires ink to work. Anyway, if I had 40 levels on me, I could shift-click on this enchanted book here, and I would get an enchanted plate. I could then take this enchanted plate, put it in the printing press, and feed it just regular vanilla-style books, and it would make three more clones of this Protection 4 book, which, by the way, I got as a quest, as a quest reward from one of the early Thomcraft quests, I do believe. So, in other words, you could just print up tons and tons of clones of books and always be sure to keep one of them in case you need more. The final thing I'd like to talk to you about that I did between episodes, as you might notice that little creepy mannequin sitting there next to our... Oh, and I should talk about the uses I have for the mana pool. On top of just being a quick fill for our botanergist inkwell, I have a whisperweed up here, specifically a floating whisperweed. You can make any floating Batania flower just by uh, making a glimmering white flower from a regular mystic flower, which you can get just by using shears on a uh, on the agrocraft crops for Batania. You combine that with a little bit of glowstone to get a glimmering white flower, then you combine that with dirt and pasture seeds to get a floating flower, and if you combine this floating flower with any Batania functional flower or any generating flower, you get this cute little floating flower. It's it's pretty, but I don't really like it because it's an actual proper block instead of something you walk through straight. But I thought it looked a little bit mystical for this area. Anyway, what this flower does is when it is not receiving a redstone signal, it will gradually convert the mana in this pool into Thaumcraft research points. Usually it gives you a couple of basics, and sometimes it gives you a more complex aspect. It's more or less random, and it's relatively slow, but if I were to build a whole bunch of them, I would start getting research points very, very quickly. Unfortunately, I cannot yet build a lot of them, because these Whisper Weeds require knowledge fragments, and I only got one from a loot bag. Yeah, you see there it gave me Gula, which is the aspect of uh, gluttony from Forbidden Magic. Anyway, it's good to keep that off because, A, it will, it, it doesn't really use that much mana, but it does use some, and B, it will also occasionally give you warp. Not permanent warp, but it will give you the proper warpy warp. 
So use that at your discretion. Ah, yes, and the new threads. This outfit is made out of enchanted fabric, which is just made out of string and wool and a little bit of magic in the enchanted table. It is on an armor stand, which just on its own is a pretty way to store armor, but if you give it a redstone signal, you can sneak click to swap your armor for it very, very quickly. And I look pretty damn good in this stuff. I made this armor because it gives you a V discount on all crafting and magic. So you can all yell at me when I inevitably forget to put it on whenever I'm doing Thaumcraft work. So we are back to just waiting for this silver wood to grow because it cannot be sped along. I'll talk to you again in a little bit. Oh my, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Not only did we get a silverwood tree, but we got one with a pure note inside of it. That doesn't happen all the time. Now, we have to be very careful not to destroy the pure node, because it is something that we can potentially use. So let's just cut out around it. And let's scan all the things. Ooh. It has, it has a bunch of baseline aspects. That's actually pretty unusual for a, for a pure node. Ah, yes, and let's get the leaves as well. So let me actually go a little bit higher before I just take out the old lumber axe. I believe this should still count as a tree just because... It has leaves on top. There we go. And now let's us carefully remove the rest of it. So yes. Ah, and yes, as you can see. Oh wow, and we got a sapling too. That's actually really lucky. Uh, Silverwood leaves do not drop saplings very often. Sometimes you might go through two or three trees before you get one. So silverwoods are something that you have to hunt for pretty much all the time in a vanilla style world. They spawn relatively rarely. Now, let's talk about this pure node. You notice how bright and vibrant and not dead this grass is? That's because pure nodes are our first terraforming technique. If I F3 here, oh wow, it's already spread that far. Yeah, you see the biome normally is wasteland but close to the pure node and spreading out farther, it's magical forest. And that will spread, I think, until it fills the entire chunk it's in or until it reaches 10 blocks. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how far it goes. Anyway, we will do our damnedest to keep this pure node around. Oh yes, and also I, uh, I just outright uninstalled Optifine and I switched to better FPS, and it's actually going fairly smoothly. So we'll see if that helps with things. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I'll deal with all that later. Pretty it up again. Now, the reason that I wanted Silverwood is not just because it's a fairly good Ordo source, but I wanted it because I need it to form these V filter oh this is an arcane recipe Dirt. these V filters and I am going to need these to make the alembics for the next thing that we are going to do let's put all that away now what do we need alembic we're just going to need a bunch of iron and a bucket, some gold, and a filter, okay? Yes, the Alembic will let us do some things with arcane furnaces, which I also need to make. So let's make the Alembic. This is kind of the next step in material processing for Thomcraft. 
we are also going to need an arcane furnace. No? Is it called an alchemical furnace? Let's just search for a furnace. There it is. Yes, it's called an alchemical furnace. And for that, we are going to need some of this arcane stone, which is very, very easy. It's just some shards and some smooth stone. I need to get some smooth stone over here. But yes, this will allow us to melt down items into their essentia, like we do in the Crucible. I don't have very much smooth stone. I need to make more. Except instead of just staying in the bubbly cauldron and eventually breaking down into pollution, we will be able to jar it up. Now, we can't just pipe liquid essentia. That's what all this stuff is called, is essentia. Oh, I'm sorry. It's I keep forgetting that it's... Maybe I should just remove that table altogether, because this thing also works in the same way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You can all yell at me. Yeah, we can't pipe Essentia directly into the Crucible or anything, though we can eventually crystallize it into little one aspect worth chunks. No, instead, what we need to do is we need to use it for something called Infusion. because it also requires one of these. And I believe the recipe went like uh, this, and it requires a regular furnace. Infusion will allow us to combine items and essentia to make advanced Thaumcraft materials. Now, Infusion is a very advanced process. We're going to have to set up its own little altar, and we're going to have to do quite a lot of things to it. But it is kind of the pathway to a lot of very, very lovely things. And there we go. Yes, I'm wearing the right clothing. So if we put down this alchemical furnace, and we put an alembic on top of it, and I believe these alembics can just stack up and up and up, and we give it some fuel, then if we melt down, say, oh, I need to... If we give it, say, well, let me look up what I'm going to need for Golem Core of Harvest. Oh, I thought these required infusion. Some of them require infusion, I think. I could have sworn. I could have freaking sworn. Yeah, well, the alchemy one requires infusion. It, you know, that must be why I thought it, because normally the alchemy golem is the only golem I really use. Huh. Well, I am a massive idiot, once again. Um, well, I, I guess let's look up what the alchemy one's going to need. It's going to need Precantatio, it's going to need Aqua, and it's going to need Motus. Motus we can make fairly easily out of trapdoors. So yeah, if I just put that in there, you see it breaks down into this purple sludge on the side, and then it fills up the alembic, and I need to go sleep. Now, it will just stay in that alembic until we pipe it out into specially prepared jars, called warded jars. And normally, uh, in Thomcraft, you're just going to have a crap ton of warded jars, and you're going to have, instead of piping running it all over, because the 
Essentia pipes are very finicky. You just use a golem to transport Essentia from your Alembics into your jars. And that is normally the only golem I use, because normally there are easier ways to do things like harvesting crops, but this is regrowth. And that knowledge was hazardous to me. <sighs> well, you know, we got this far with it. We might as well just keep on going. So, I need to make some warded jars. No? What's it? Where is it in any eye? Oh, there it is. I just didn't see it before. That was weird. Yes, for that we're going to need a crap ton of grass of glass plates. Grass plates would be unsanitary. Don't eat on those. Mm -hmm. Let's just make twenty-five glass worth. No, I'm sorry. It should have been twenty-four. Why did I think it was six? Oh, yes, and we also... Well, I can just use great wood. Yes. Running around. And we, of course, are going to need tons of these. They're just made in the arcane table, just like that. And they make very pretty noises. Thunk, thunk, thunk. You can make a little instrument out of them. Let's put that away. And then we need some tubing for now, because we don't have... Oops. Yeah, just tube. Uh, da, 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 restricted Essentia tube. Well, I think that recipe calls for the basic one. Yeah, and this is what we are going to need Quicksilver for. Which I don't think I've actually made any Quicksilver yet. So I'll get you back into a minute. Yeah, I'll get to you in a minute when I have that ready. While waiting for things to smelt, I decided to rejigger my casting tables once more. Now this pattern may look a little bit weird, but it ensures that the liquid will always split to the drains down instead of uh, before... Okay, it will always split and then drain instead of splitting and draining all at once. And hopefully this will give us an even pour between these four tables. I have a stack's worth of iron in here. Let's just hit that, and we will check back on it in a minute. But this is potentially exciting times because, yeah, that doesn't look perfectly even, but it's pretty close. This might work. Holy crap, it worked. It, it, it worked perfectly. Yeah, we have, we have the two stacks. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, special thanks to user John Egbert in the comments for, uh, well, he didn't exactly suggest this, but the conversation I had with him helped inspire this. So yeah, thank you. You helped us reach liftoff. Okay, here we are back with all the ingredients we need to make these tombs. Except we need more V. Yes. Doing the old wand shuffle is always a little bit inconvenient. Anyway, as you can see, you get quite a lot of them for just a little bit of magic. I think I'll just settle at having a stack. They are good to have, even if you don't use them terribly often. Now, these will take out of the Alembic and into the jar. See, we have a little jar of motion essentia there and then we have oops then we can go to the other side and we can just pipe out the arbor 
And Arbor is a fairly useless one, so you can clear a jar by sneak right clicking on it. And you would think that would make flux, but it doesn't. And uh, yeah, these tubes are pretty bad because they only carry one type of Essentia at a time, and they have limited suction. Each thing that is drawing Essentia into it, like these jars here, produce a certain amount of suction, and every pipe separating them and a source of Essentia loses one suction. And if the suction can't reach, you don't get your pipes working. So you have to do things like you have to make buffers with arcane bellows and you have to do all sorts of routing tricks and they can't be terribly big. In the end, it's just easier to have a crap ton of golems carrying around your Essentia. Speaking of which, now that we have this little melting system in place and now that we know that we don't really need the infusion just yet, we will get to it eventually. Probably not too far from now, actually. But we can actually make ourselves our golem. This is going to require Humanus, it's going to require Motus, and it's going to require Spiritus. Just to make the golem. And uh, yes, it uses this hay bale as the acceptor of all that power. So, Humanus is fairly easy. That, I believe, can most easily be found in Rotten Flesh because it is man-meat. Just let that sink in. Yes, one point of Humanus and two points of Corpus, I believe that is called. Spiritus is most easily sourced from Soul Sand, also one point. And Motus, you saw, is sourced from Trapdoors. So that's 16. I only need four. Oh well, it's always good to have more than you need. And we can just take this and we can do this in the cauldron. <sighs> so let this be a lesson to you. Check any eye. Even if you think you know what you're doing, you probably don't. Check any eye, it is your friend. So, let's just check that. Yeah, one point of each. Dupe. 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 And dupe. Ooh. Oh, exciting, exciting, exciting. Now let's make the goo. Make the gas! Goodbye, gas. Now, here we have a golem. But golems on their own are fairly useless. If I take this little guy and I put him down... Oh my god, I forgot how cute these things are. Oh! Oh, you're so adorable! Who is a twisted mockery of life? Yes, you are! <laughs> yes, we need, we need some... We, <clears throat> we need some tools. To tell him what to do. We need a Golemancer's Bell, which is fairly easy. That's just a stick and some nether quartz. And we need to make him his core, which I've already brought the ingredients over from before. But I forgot about the bell. I can't wait for applied energistics. One of those. Four of those. Yes. The Golemancer's Bell is used to program a golem, as well as acting kind of like a wrench. You see, if I just try and pick this guy up with my bare hand, I can't right-click him, and if I left-click him, I just, I just punch the... Oh, I'm so sorry. You're so cute. Thankfully, he heals. Now, to pick him up, you need to sneak right-click with a Golemancer Bell. No? Is it left click? Yes. Oh, and I need to... <laughs> the other thing we need is we need a 
core for him. Because even with the bell, I can't really command him directly. He needs internal programming to tell him what to do. I thought it was made of that. Okay, so... Harvest core. Uh, yeah. Oh, arcane... Arcane tape. You know what? Just move that over. There we go. And then, that is just a blank seal. I need to give it... Chop, alchemy, decanting, gather, harvest. I need to give it Mato and Messis. Or Meto and Messis. Mm. Uh, Meto is the only one that's fairly hard. I believe that comes from Shears most easily. But you know what? I am actually going to farm mobs tonight because my wands are getting a little bit empty from all of this crafting. So I am just going to put my adorable new friend away, and I will get back to you in the morning. All right. Oh yes, just a quick aside. If you need to look up where you can find an aspect and you can't remember it, you can just look in your thalmanomenom and if you mouse over one of the aspects in that big list on the main page, you see a list of some of the items that it can be found on. It's a little bit of a basic interface, but it can get you through. Anyway, I was right. Mato can be found on Shears, and Messis can be found on Wheat. We combine all those and we get a Harvesting Core. And we get some Flux Gas. Always good luck. Now, over by our steam engine, which is the first thing I would like to automate, I have built myself a little greenhouse. Just as an enclosure to make sure that the golems don't ever throw anything outside of the Hopperhawk's range. So, let's put this little guy down. Oh, he is so cute. And then you give him his core. Oh, hello. And he's... Oh, you are enthusiastic. Okay, so to use a golem, you have to get him to hold still. Oh, could I just... I think I can just tell him... Yeah, there. And that tells him that is his ho that is his home. When he has nothing to do, he will return there, and he will never stray too far from it. Now that he is all done, why isn't he harvesting these? I know that golems don't scan constantly, but he should be able to see these plants. Oh well, there's far more than enough in there. So let me just show you a cool little tool that I have that I use occasionally. Oh, I already have it in here. This is a builder's wand. It's very simple to construct. It's just two sticks and a, and a diamond. And, oh, I changed these to steel frames. That's right. I was, I had the wrong type of glass in there, excuse me. Ah, yes, these obsidian chisels are made very similarly to regular chisels. They just have a lot more durability. Now, see? If I start mousing over and I have the blocks in my inventory, I get the option to just place huge amounts of blocks. And there we have it! We have an automatic coal production. This thing will never go hungry. Oh, it feels so good. I never have to do anything for this again. I can just leave it. Maybe I can put like an upgrade on that golem so he can see a little bit farther or change his home to the hopperhawk, but I mean, 
Oh, this feels good. This feels good. This has taken far too long. It feels so good. Okay. Next up, I think I am going to figure out some sort of automatic mana production because you saw how long that takes. I will get back to you when I figure out what I want to do. I just had the best idea and I have to try it out. You can. You can name them. Oh. Oh, this is so cute. Yes, Mr. Grumples, work for me. Neat. This red crystal stuff what, that I uh, had to make for our, one of the Thumbcraft quests is pretty interesting. It's basically just redstone that you can place on any side of the block, including on the tops and and on the sides. And I just used it to set up this really simple trapdoor cover leading under to the coal drawer. Just in case I want to get coal from there or I want to do maintenance. And those microblox covers, eh, they stick out a little bit, but not too much. It's not really noticeable if you don't look. And I might brick up the rest of this stairwell properly. Actually, on reflection, I think that something as major as a mana setup should be its own episode, and I have enough footage for today. So, next time we will be getting all the mana. See you then.